Hey everyone, so another day, same story. And this time it involves the Crawley Towns manager who's now been suspended due to the reports circulating that he has been racially abusing his own players. Now, in the report, the links will be provided in the description box below. The article goes on to say that he ran a segregated training ground in which the black players had to change in different dressing rooms, called them Zulu warriors. He was calling Asian players suicide bombers. There's so many instances of abuse in this article that the players had to put up with. You'll think it sounds like something from the 80s, but it's not the 80s. We're in the 2020s. Now, since the press release, he's been suspended by the team. So I suppose fair play to them. But the question has to be raised because if this article wasn't released, would he have been suspended? Which begs the question, how come this wasn't spotted before? And how long has this been left to go unchecked? You see, Crawley Town is not a big football team. It's a lower team in a in a low in a football period league two. So the news coverage isn't going to be that high anyway. So it's not like a Manchester United where every single thing that they get what that they do, good, bad or indifferent, gets so many press releases. Crawley Town won't get that many press releases. So it must have been, in my opinion, so much easier to get away with things like this. And you have to wonder, what about other teams in a similar situation where smaller teams, the manager has even more power and therefore the players must feel they cannot go to anyone else to talk about the situation. This is what happened here. But even still, like most football teams, there's assistants, coaches, physios, um, sometimes technical directors, directors of football uh, on the training ground on a day-to-day basis, not just its weekly stuff. So how is it that they allow this to take place? And why did they not challenge what was going on? Surely they are just as responsible for the environment in which the players had to put it with all this abuse. Unless, and this is kind of what I suspected, and when I read the article, it kind of confirmed it. A lot of them saw the manager's comments as just banter. Now, (laughs) we all know what banter is, and this is the killing part, because people always brush aside a lot of these things as, oh, it's just banter. But when you read the article... And when you look at the excerpts, the words, even without context, even not knowing what the dynamics of that change of room, the dynamics of that situation, we all know what banter is. And that did not sound anything like banter. Now, the manager is currently suspended pending trial, but he still remains heavily popular with the fans. They've been chanting, we want our Yems back. So it looks as if, regardless of the allegations, regardless of why he's been suspended, the fans there, don't they don't seem to mind about the allegations, which... That's also very, very telling, to say the least. Now, of course, there's only allegations at this point. We don't know what's going to take place. But if the allegations are found to be true, then I believe what should be this correct course of action is he and the coaching team should immediately be dismissed and also further investigation as to how this was even allowed to happen. So, in closing, I'm going to say this. I do agree. I'm not one of those people. I do agree. Society has changed a hell of a lot since the 80s. However, when you look at stories like this and stories that I've heard, which are still only probably more still to come to light, it still proves we still have a long way to go. So let me know your thoughts on this story. Like, share, subscribe if you are new. Until next time, I'm out.